When you enter the Hall of Fame in a Pokemon game, your team usually looks something like this. Your starter, a flying type, a strong water type, and a, a dragon type you spam Dragon Claw on. So I threw that out the window and made things a lot harder. We've got basic Nuzlocke rules. If a Pokemon faints, I can't use that anymore, and I can only get the first Pokemon I find in any given area. And then for some extra spice, I added some common hardcore rules. No leveling past the next gym leader, and no items inside of battle, but, but that wasn't enough for me. What if I only used the worst possible Pokemon available to me. But what constitutes a, as the worst Pokemon? I decided that to be any Pokemon with a base stat total of 400 or less whilst it is fully evolved. For, for example, remember these Pikachu clones from Hoenn? They're too good for me. I have about 15 Pokemon to choose from, but I will be excluding Ditto because transform copies base stats from its opponent. But those are the rules, and I haven't been to friend, I mean Kalos in a while. So let's take our Pokemon journey there. After a long day at childhood capitalism land, my friends asked me for a nickname. I won't lose. And they presented me three animals that they captured I saved from Mickey's Horror Land. Fox, a frog, and a... I'll take this one. It's going in the box anyway. That was actually a, a pretty bad choice. I should have just taken the fire type so my rivals didn't have it. Because as you can imagine, a lot of the bad Pokemon happen to be bugs. So after telling my mother I'm going to stop the fashion police from reawakening the agent deity from the ground, I find the first Pokemon of our adventure. Weedle. And just after that, in Viridian Forest, a Caterpie! The first gym's level cap is only 12, but that's high enough to have fully evolved both of these guys, to Beedrill and Butterfree. With Butterfree having 97% accurate powder moves, it makes it pretty good for the early game. Plus, these guys have two of the best stat totals I can get at this point with 395 each. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have bad news in that my footage for the first gym leader got corrupt, but I can tell you that Infestation is such a bitch this low of a level. But coming out of that fight, I was pretty excited because in the next route, I could catch a Skitty, something that isn't a bug type. And it would be like the only Pokemon I could get that actually has the 400 base stat total. That isn't Skitty. But I guess I have to get it and ruin my chance at a Skitty because this is one of the two routes that have multiple available Pokemon to me. Goodbye, Skitty. I hope you find the way a lot of your dreams. I then realized I can get a Farfetch'd in Route 22, which I could have gotten before the first gym. That would have been very nice. But due to it evolving in Generation 8 and not 6, it is a legal encounter for me, and having a Pokemon that can fly is always good. The second sexiest professor makes me fight more of Walt's animal army. The Charmander looks a little scary, but I was way over leveled and I had something that wasn't a bug. So I stole his fire lizard and put it in the box to rot for eternity. At this point, I can no longer progress because this rich man won't wake up the Snorlax blocking the road till I find his lost dog. It wasn't lost. It was in his garden, the things I do for the wealthy. But as I do so, I stumble across an Incarda to catch. Whilst Ninjask is way above the stat total I can use, Ninja is only a 235 stat total, thanks to its 1 HP. But Weedo, why do you want a Pokemon with 1 HP? That seems awful. Well, by itself, sure. but. Sheninja has the ability Wonder Guard, which means it can only take damage from moves that are super effective against it, which makes it really good if I know the enemy can't hit back at all. I will always win that fight. Is this one of the worst Pokemon? Eh. But it does have terrible stats, so it's in the rules. After the Snorlax goes, we have another encounter here. It can either be a Volby, Illuminize, or a Smurgle. <laughs> Luckily, we get the Smurgle, which is very unique because Smurgle has the move Sketch, which means it can copy a move from any other Pokemon in the game, literally any Pokemon, but it can't learn TMs and it's got terrible stats. But if we desperately need a, a type of move that we can't get anywhere else, Smurgle can learn it. Route 8 is another important encounter. Love this! <laughs> Meme not for literally how bad it is. It only has a 330 base stat total and it doesn't even like a good ability like Sheninja. It's just bad. But it does have one thing. It's water type! Which will help us immensely in the next gym, which is rock type gym, considering the rest of my team is at least two times weak to it. There is one more important Pokemon we get from Glittering Cave here, which is probably just as important as Sheninja, Mawile, which in this game gains a fairy typing, and also shares a dual type with like the best competitive Pokemon in the world right now. It's gotta be pretty good with two immunities and nine resistances, but there are two factors of RNG I need to be on my side. 
I don't need to worry about not catching a Mawar because it's the only Pokemon I can get in Glittering Cave, but Mawar can have two possible abilities. Hyper Cutter, which stops the enemy from lowering my attack stat, which isn't that bad. But the other is I Intimidate, which lowers the enemy's attack whenever Mawar comes out the Pokeball. It's like the most broken ability ever, like easily. And the other RNG factor I need is the Mawar to be the right level. The Mawar can either be level 15 or, or 16 when we encounter it. But the level 16 version doesn't have Fairy Wind. And it won't learn another Fairy move until we get to the move reminder way past the 6th gym. So I need a level 15 Intimidate Mawa. Easy clap. Now for Grant and the Rock Gym, one of the hardest fights we'll have for a little bit. I leave with Brother Free to sleep this dino and stop the love disc and it parahacks me. Farfetch can save me though, luckily I at speed and get the first kill. But now there's this one. But this is why Mawa was important. The Intimidate lowers the attack and the Fairy Wind is super effective due to this guy being part Dragon type. Love disc almost died but we made it through something very scary. Between gyms here, we get one more encounter in Sableye, which is Dark Ghost type means that it's only weak to Fairy. Another great Pokemon for pivoting and swapping to take a hit if needed. So third is the Furry Fighting Gym. Seriously, I haven't seen someone who likes Lucario this much since like a 2014 Furry convention. Leading with Shed Ninja forces us to swap to Machoke, as that's the only Pokemon that has a move that can hit my Ghost Bug. I get a bit of chip damage off before I swap to Marwile and Intimidate, but the Machoke still lowers all my stats. But after some juggling around, it goes down, eventually. Pelucha comes up next with its special move, Flying Press, which is a fighting move that deals both fighting and flying damage, which c would kill my Shin- I guess it, it doesn't. Which means the last two Pokemon can touch my ghost at all, and that's three gems down. After a terrible defeat, Corinna tries to convince me to join her Cult of Fur, but I beat her with her own Pokemon and leave it at the top of the Tower of Mastery. 525 stat total? That's way too strong for me. Gym 4, the Grass Gym. Finally, a use for my bugs. Well, the OP one. Jump up fast at Acrobatics, so I can't lead with Smurgle, but Mawa can clean up the Cotton Head. Then Shedinja cleans the goat, but he can't stay into the Weeping Bell because it has the chance to poison Shedinja, which would just kill it. So Butterfree gets some use again. I'm just gonna take a minute here to say I hate this desert. It sucks. It's like almost as bad as surfing through Hoenn. Gym 5, the Electric Gym. Things are hard again. Mainly due to the fact the only real move I have to deal with it is Dig on my Sableye, which doesn't hit the Emolga at all. We just keep juggling back and forth as I keep chipping with whatever Clement brings in till eventually Emolga falls. And then Shininja can Dig a 1v1 versus the Heliolisk, which has no effective moves. Now for the first challenging rival fight, because Delphox is finally fully evolved, plus an Absol. So I really can't use Shininja here. Mjolnir was easy, a few crunches from Marwile, it's dead. But Delphox Oko's most of my team with a Mystical Fire, which also lowers the special attack, so my Surfs do less. Luckily its first move is Psychic, which gets me a free swap into Sableye, which is completely immune to it, and I can hit a knockoff for about half health. Then a priority Shadow Sneak to kill it off before it gets me. Absol, I'll use Fake Tears to lower its special defense, follow up with a Fairy Wind and Oko. Okay, one more. Now it's done. Also, this part is like really depressing. This is some like horror movie shit. The Fairy Gym next, which would be great for Beedrill, but she leads with Marwile, which I know only be weak to fire and ground. So I use Sableye to dig, but it keeps messing with me. Fortunately, her Marwile doesn't know a fairy move at all, so I, it can't kill my Sableye straight up. But I do eventually have to swap into my own Marwile to get the kill here. Mr. Mime dies from a bug, and then Sylveon kept using Charm to lower my attack over and over. I was hitting 1 HP a turn, but it can't kill me. <laughs> I win. I haven't given much love to Love Disc outside of like the second gym. It was huge during all the Team Flare section when Houndoom showed up, so I just wanted to say, say thank you, Love Disc. You're not utterly useless. I finally get to Den 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 this place, which is where the move deleter and relearner is, so I give my while play rough and iron head and never look back. And I pick up the Super Rod, which allows me to get one more encounter all the way back on Route 12. Similar to Farfetch, this Pokemon actually has a stat total of 410 in Generation 8 and in Evolution, but in Gen 6, Corsola only has 380. I'll give them the lefties and let them be the damage sponge. I also bring the Smurgle onto the team as Olympia has coverage on all her Pokemon for Shen Ninja, so it's pretty much useless, but I've only managed to get Discharge on my Smurgle so far. Same play leads with a knockoff, which was reduced by Reflect, and then I go for a Power Gem as it uses Light Screen 2, back to knockoff, 
a potion and some slapping slider it's on one hp far fetch now after a hill to show off its crits night slash coming in clutch for slow king i decided to try out the smurgle with its electro move its stats are so bad <laughs> There goes any coverage plans I had. My world comes in clutch though to finish it off as it also puts me to sleep. I figured Meowstick would use Fake Out so I could take the damage on Farfetch'd and outspeed with a Night Slash. But I end up having doubts. I go into Butterfree and get destroyed as I get off a Chunky Bug Buzz. And let course the tank hits and kill the final one. Very janky, but still no deaths and seven badges. For some reason I keep Smurgle all through this Team Flare section without using it once. As I catch this big deer underground, this fashion forward tech startup on Trevor Hunter wants a fight. Only thing is, he has a Mega. This is where I spent like 3 hours going through damage calculators to find out my optimal strat through this boss fight. Cause Mega Gyarados has a 640 base stat, which is 50% more than anything I have. Let's see if my math or what pays off. Mean Shower is easy. I learned this sweet trick where I can make it kill itself with its own high jump kicks. Protect and ghost types, baby. Pyro was pretty easy with Corsola. Just protecting stuff to kill and recover HP as it tries to flinch with Dark Pulse. Honchkrow is scary though with its high crit chance, but two power gems and zero crits against me means I get out super lucky. Gyarados time, which I wanted to use Chen Ninja for as Gyarados has no fire, flying, dark, rock, or ghost moves. But Mold Breaker when it mega evolves means it can just ignore Wonder Guard. Great. New plan. To Farfetch to escape the EQ. And back to Mawile to intimidate. Back to Farfetch and back to Mawile for a second intimidate. Farfetch again to fly and protect stall some more Aquatel PP. Then to Sableye, who lands the Will O Wisp to new to the attack of Gyarados again. Now most of the stress has left my body at this point. Back to call Stella to eat a weak hit, and lastly to Butterfree to dodge the last EQ and finish up with a speedy bug buzz. The fashion place gone, I can go back to wearing my Crocs and socks in peace. To Terminus Cave where I pick up an Ariados called Peter, no reason for the name, and he replaces Smurgle in the party as he has sticky webs. A great move to slow down my enemies, seems as all mine are already stupidly slow. The sexy heartthrob is back after stealing my Charmander from my box? Eh, they're all dead. Time to fight all three of these goons in an epic bridge battle. Shauna leads with a Delcaddy. Was that the one I left behind all the way at the start of this adventure? Did they ever find that huge honking well lord companion? Uh, dead. <laughs> Gudra Oko to apply rough and Greninja with no dark type moves means my own ninja can shine. Tiano now. Talonflame leads. Easy work for Corsola. Roserade. Uh, not so much. I was super reckless here and luckily the poison point doesn't activate on my shit ninja. Corlin does have a dark type move though so I gotta go. But player Earth wins that, or recklessness. Uh, I guess I just forgot about the poison point. Uh, Trevor time. Right you first. Sableye dick. Yeah, I guess it's the best I have. Swap the Shed Ninja. Use the Shadow Sneak as he swaps to Aerodactyl. And course, I can finish this one out after he lets me go. And Florgus can't hit Shed Ninja, so an easy win there. Time for the final gem. Though none of Wolfric's Pokemon can actually hit Cheninja, Obama Snow has no warning, meaning the hail will start instantly and kill my little guy off, so I just can't abuse him in this gym. I lead Ariados with Cross Poison, hoping to crit, but 75% isn't quite enough, I guess. Into Corsula to store the hail a bit, and same with Mawile. For the safe switch to Shed Engine now that the hail's gone. Wolfric is forced to go to Avalug, which my Corsula can deal with pretty easy with some power gems. Obama Snow is back now with more hail though. So that means more stalling. Until another safe shit ninja swap to get this abominus no kill. I can't stay in with Cryagonal though, because it can reset hail. The more power gems from the pink rock until I can't risk taking confusion hits anymore. And a foul slap from the gem monster. Eight gym badges, five ass has to go, and a rival fight. So now's the time I get my team ready for the Elite Four. I get all the TMs, train up the Pokemon the way I need them, and get everything all sorted. But that means we have to say goodbye to Farfetch'd because at this point, the flying type just isn't that useful anymore. But replacing him is the worst pug that stole our skiddy away, Ladian. Why am I doing this now? Well, first off, its special defense and speed are actually not that bad, but also because it can learn light screen and reflect. It might not be able to punch, but you can definitely help protect the team. Seems as the Elite Four has a lot of coverage and my stats are pretty whack, uh, I need as much bulk as I can get. But in order to make the screens more effective, I need to get the item Light Clay, which extends the duration of screens from five turns to eight. That's more than 50% extra time. But the only way to get Light Clay in this game is by slapping Ghost Children with my spider until one hands it over. This was a great hour of my life. Oh, and I found this shiny when I was looking for the Snell TM but it, it killed itself. Now, before the Elite Four, my rival wants one 
more fight. I put Letty into work here to set up light screen and struggle bug to lower the special attack even more. I don't like this bug, but it can stay. I go to Ariados to finish off this cat. Is it a cat? The furry convention is back and I spend more time doing math and decided that snarling with Sableye to reduce the damage would be the best play to do until I can get a safe swipe in with the Shadow Claw and knock out this Fasona. Ulterior always seems scary to me based off fighting Winona from when I was a kid with its Dragon Dance. Ice Beam from Corsola doesn't kill, but two hits on a four times effective move isn't that bad. I use Shininja to force the swap to add soul here, but the X's on the switch is Easy Clap and now Jolteon can't touch me. Time to put the squad to the ultimate test. I then spend the next best part of the next day just going through damage calculations and thinking of the strategy and trying every possibility with every move I can think of to get through these last five trainers. I choose to start with Drasna here because her dragon types were just the easiest for me to work with. I start with the light screen to defend my team and go to Shed Ninja to force her to swap. Though it doesn't swap instantly and I could have easily been poison pointed there. The next turn she does swap though with a 40% shadow claw and a free clean up with ice beam to kill yet another flying dragon type. I go to Mawa here because it's the easiest choice to face up against Dryal as it's immune to both poison and dragon type and the player rough just kills it. I go to Shen Ninja here again as I completely forget about Ruskin which would just kill me so back to Mawa to intimidate and Ladian to reply. And then back to Mawa to lower the attack again miss the player off and then Oko. Leave it on 1 HP and then Oko as I get to 13 whole HP. And then Ulteria can't kill my Shen Ninja. I will leave zero risk and just play this safely even if Ice Beams from Corslow kill it quicker. Next I choose Seabold, the water guy who leads with this shitty lobster that keeps pulsing with super special attacks. So I light screen and struggle bug to reduce his hits as much as I can and go to Corsola knowing I can come out from this pivot with next to zero HP loss. And then I swap to Shen Ninja to bait the dark pulse which does nothing to my one on the swap as they misclick Iron Head and clean up with Play Rough. Gyarados time. Luckily no Mega Stone this time so I can use Shen Ninja to force the swap again back into whatever the fuck this is. I know these guys get bashed for their design, but at least you can tell what they are. This! Like, what the fuck is it even supposed to be? Also, it's super annoying to play around, due to the horrors of the rock type which kill all my bugs. First, the Intimidate, and I swap to the Corsola. But Rage Shell lowering my defense isn't great. Time to set up a Reflect on the Cross Chop and another Intimidate, which I just about survive. At this point, I'm just PP sorting as much as I can. Surf does okay, I guess. But Toxic will help out here a lot. The full restore kind of blows, but I tox it again immediately. The reflect goes. The double intimidate keeps me going with Sableye's great hits. As the next full restore removes Toxic again, a little back and forth here, but my berry means I can survive more hits than this monster can. The crit ring scares me a bit, so I do some more swapping to get Corsler out to finish this off. At this point, Shininja can sweep the last two with no effort and a few A presses. This one was way harder than I expected going into it. Next is Wickstrom and his steel types. Again, I leave with light screens and struggle bugs until Clefkly is as low as it can go. In doing so, he sets up spikes, meaning Sheninja will just die the second it hits the field, but I have a plan. I keep on going this until I can light screen again and swap to Ariados to do one thing, set up the sticky webs. Marwell then goes into Swords Dance and Power Punch due to the Torment I have to swap between the two, but that kills the Clefkly. I play rough here on the proper pass as it has Sturdy and would just heal if I just hit it with any more damage than this. So we get it just weak enough so it doesn't heal and, and we do a follow up hit just to kill it off. Now here's why I webbed Aegislash. This is so scary and can easily wipe me here without a good answer. As it comes to defense mode, my player F takes it down to about 70%, but it's follow up Iron Head doesn't knock me out due to the attack drop from my player F. Speed control is super important and 10% secondary effect rates. One more Iron Head with the out speed here knocks it out and scissor here being a flinching little bitch does eventually go down to some foul plays coming back to it i probably should have done this one last just to get a little bit more xp to level up my guys a little bit more and you'd have to rely on some annoyances i saved the fire leader malva for last because i was scared of her destroying my bugs but i guess i just forgot that i had a corsler on my team pyro does have wild charge but never uses it and just wants to lower my special attack until i swap to reset my stat drops and then it decides to use it uh, i can't put a snarl to reduce any flame pharaoh damage back to corsler to spam surf like i'm 10 again go connect which i swap the letting to avoid the earthquake and set up a reflect and luckily avoid the stone edge my while again to intimidate and back to letting to avoid the eq which it doesn't do 
and, and uses curse. So I need to reset those stat changes. This is when I realize it has the white smoke ability. I'm really dumb. Back to Corsola to spam surf, which I should have just done from the beginning. I really just overthought doing this. But back to Corsola to ride the waves to one HP due to confide. But again, surf spam does eventually win. I hit myself in confusion a few times here, but the surf killed the bird. One more trainer stands before me and victory. We've lost no teammates so far, even after some close, close calls where crits could have easily wiped me. Just me, my shitty Pokemon, and you clicking the like button if you think I can make it through this. Tiantha leads Halucha as I leash a ninja, knowing from before that the flaming press can't hurt me. It forces the swap to this big scary dragon, which my shadow claw actually hits okay for. The head smash is coming though, so Mawal delivers the minus one attack and takes the hit as the recall damage gets Tyrantrum to just above half health. EQ is coming, so to Ledian and back to Mawal for the minus two. Ledian again, but this time instead of switching back to Mawal, I decide to set up Reflect, which even with minus two attack on Reflect kills our fast member. You really helped this run, Ledian, but it doesn't mean I like you yet. Fortunately, the raw recoil was enough for Tyrantrum to kill itself though, which is great news. <laughs> Back to a similar start as Halucha stays into Sword Sands as I swipe it with a Shadow Claw. Next turn, she does swap into Guja, which takes about 50% from a Shadow Claw though, but I don't think I outspeed, so I swap to Corsola and Toxic and eat up some super effective focus misses, and my Ice Beams do next to nothing. And a heavy, heavy focus miss means I gotta swap now. Stable I come as a Snarl and lower the special attack as I swap into Aridos to set up webs. The Snarl really comes in clutch here as 10 HP HP isn't a lot. Uh, comes in uh, and can't touch my Shadow Ninja. So I go for the Shadow Claw and end up killing Gorgeist after it heals. Aurora back to light screen here. She swaps back to Halucha, which I just knock out. And then Aurora is back and we both swap here. Me to Sableye and Diantha to Gardevoir, the juicer ace. I go to Snow here to reduce her special attack, but unfortunately the sticky webs weren't enough. And a Moonblast carries Sableye. Death's in the final hour are okay. It's now or never. My wild time. I survived a T-Bolt on 5 HP, but misclick a player off here instead of the Iron Head. It does do a bit, but isn't super effective, and Marwal goes down because of it. And Shed Ninja isn't safe here due to the Shadow Ball on Gardevoir. But I go into Peter here, on his 10 HP, manages to outspeed and land the Cross Poison. With great power comes great responsibility. I do one more Cross Poison on the Aurora. And that's it. A very long and challenging victory is mine. So back to the swings, where I'll sit until someone eventually boots up Pokemon X and Y again to challenge me, the Kalos champion with my shitty ass Pokemon. If you have any other ideas for Nuzlocke challenges like this, let me know in the comments. And shout out to Flygon HG who inspired me to do something like this. He has a bunch of similar hardcore Nuzlocke's with themes around them if you're interested. Oh, and click the subscribe button.